Good afternoon. How many perfectionists do I have in the room? <laughs> hey, I don't know if you, hey, you were like. <laughs> All right, Here, here's, what, here's what I want you to know, okay? Here, here's what I want you to know. The, the most frustrated people that I coach are always the most successful. Frust Frust well, I won't answer that second one. I won't answer the second question. The first question, and so why? Why are the most successful people the most frustrated people, okay? And I want to show you something today because I, I need to get you out of, the, of a gap. And there's a gap that we live in that really le leads us to believe that we're not making progress. You follow me? Okay, and, and, and if you're a perfectionist, there's two ways to measure success. Okay, and this is how most people measure it. Here's where I am today. Here's where I think I should be. And this represents a gap. Everybody see that? So here's where I am. That's actual. That's reality. Or your perception of your reality. Here's where I believe I should be, which is a mental construct that you have created in your own brain. It is ideal. That means perfect. Between where I am versus where I think I should be is always this. This gap serves both a positive and a negative function in your life. Where you think you are is also a mental construct. That's exactly right. So, so for you, what, what is the good of this gap? Because there is some good to this. That's right. There's room for improvement. That's right. You're, 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 you're striving towards something. The problem of this gap is it is a gap of perfection. So, in, so what you're really measuring here is where I am versus where I think I should be. And when you get here, guess what will happen? You'll move it. So you say, well, if I just did 33 deals a month and I get to 36, I'd be completely happy. Well, then if I get to 36, then I want to get to 48. Then once I get to 48, does that make sense? And so what happens is you never get there. It's a constant gap. So this is a gap of perfection that leaves you incredibly frustrated because you don't feel like you're making any progress. Everybody follow me? And this is why you're like, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. When I first started writing books, I wanted to go from being a high school basketball coach to John Maxwell in like a week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and John Maxwell's been doing this 40 more years than I have. He sold 60 million books. And I was so frustrated because I wasn't moving fast enough. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? And I would go to my coaching programs and, what, and, and, and I would get there. And my coach asked me one day, why are you always so pissed off? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not pissed off. I'm just frustrated because I'm not moving fast enough. And, and so here's what he would do. He would say, now hold on just a second. Let's look back at just a few things. He would say, now how old are you, coach? I'd say, at that time I was 35. Said, I'd say, I'm 35. He said, now, now did you not just win a championship just a few years ago in sports? Yes. He said, now how many books have you written? Well, I've written this many books. He said, now is your business growing double year over year? Right, double every year. And I'd say, well, yes. And he'd say, well, then why are you so frustrated? Because you are making tremendous progress. Everybody follow me. Okay? That's what we should be measuring is progress, not perfection. Okay? And how do you measure progress? Is you look at where you are today versus where you were at some point in the past. Instead of measuring perfection, which is up here, you are now measuring progress, which is down here. Okay? Everybody see that? How many people are better off today than they were 30 days ago? How many people are better off today than they were 90 days ago? How many people in the last 30 days have learned something new that can help them, right? So progress is both qualitative, which means we cannot measure it, but we can feel it. Like confidence. I've got more confidence today than I had a month ago. I'm making more outbound calls than I were a month ago. Everybody with me? Okay. I'm learning something new that I didn't know. That's all progress. That's qualitative. I can't measure it, but I can feel it. Progress for some people is just showing up <laughs> on time. Progress for some people is just, right? So progress is where I used to be versus where I am today. Okay. So progress can also be quantitative which means last month I sold this, 
This month I sold this. This time last year I was right here. This time this year I'm right here. Look at the growth I'm experiencing. So if you ever catch yourself falling in this perfectionism gap, you need to look back. Okay? At where you used to be versus where you are today. And if you're not making any progress, you've got every right in the world to be frustrated. I remember being in Florida once and I have this beautiful little condo in Florida on the beach. It's a little two bedroom and I love it. My wife loves it. My daughter loves it. And I remember coaching uh, a big home builder that was worth about $50 million and during the recession and I called him one day and he was just so frustrated. I'm like, man, what is wrong with you? And he said, well, we have to sell our house on the bay and downsize. And I said, well, what are you, what are you downsizing to? He said, well, we're, I said, how much is that current house you, you got there? Well, five million bucks. What are you downsizing to? 2.7 million. He was frustrated by that. Here I am just as content as I could be in my little two-bedroom condo looking at the ocean. Does that make sense? He was actually, I said, man, a lot of people would love to have a $2.7 million house on the bay. Look, you got this all screwed up, man. You, you see what I'm saying? And this is the world we live in, is this progress. So I want to start, every, at, mostly at a lot of meetings, I'll ask you to tell the person beside you what progress you're making. And progress sometimes is you don't fly off the handle. You keep your cool where you used to lose it. You're staying more, more grounded. Progress could be I'm learning something new. I'm trying two new strategies I was not trying. Sometimes progress is just one small thing. But this, anytime you feel frustrated, I want you to remember this. What progress are we making? You know, on the way over here today, Bill asked me, how did you used to do this without this team of people? <laughs> when it was just you. And I'm like, I don't know how I did it. But how much opportunity was I losing when I was doing it with just me? Right? Progress is having new team members and making new markets and doing new things. And we need to always remember that. So I want to start off this meeting and I want you to say over the last 30, 60, 90 days, here's the progress I feel like I'm personally making. This will put you in a positive mindset versus negative as well, okay? Take off. Don't talk at once. Go ahead. This is just to the person beside you. Here's the progress I think I'm making. <laughs> Hello? Am I the only one in the room? <laughs> Did you get that on camera, Jack? <laughs> so anytime you start to feel frustrated, anytime that you start to feel frustrated a lot, I want you to stop and remember this. Progress is not always shown in numbers. Okay, I remember the first time my four-year-old daughter at the time, we were driving down the road and she raised her hand to speak. And she goes to Montessori school and they teach her very specific things. And I looked at my wife and I said, who is that? girl in our back seat because it ain't my daughter because most kids interrupt well they had taught her to raise her hand and she raised her hand to speak is that progress yes or no yes so progress is qualitative and quant so when you start feeling very frustrated you need to say man i'm making progress it's not showing up yet maybe in the numbers but 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 i'm doing i make my pitch is better my explanation of services we're going to work on today i'm coming into the day with the plan which i wouldn't before i've got more accountability than i've had in my life i'm starting my days off better Always remember this because there's no need to be frustrated when you're making progress. Now, if you're not making any progress, you should be upset. You should, you should feel this frustration. Frustration is just misguided enthusiasm, by the way. It's just something on the inside that wants to come out, right? It's just you got something on the inside that wants to come out and you, you don't know how to bring it out. Okay? Do you like that one, Bill? It's a new one. Bill thinks he's heard everything I got, but he hadn't yet. I hold a little bit back every now and then. So, so here's what we're going to do today, guys. It's going to be a great day. Thank you for being on the accountability sessions. I think it's a great way that you're doing that, where you're getting together and being that, just having a little, it's almost like a little shot of vitamin B there in a week, right, to keep you focused. Today we're going to talk about and discuss two things, two competencies. One is the hit list. I'm going to really get your mind thinking differently about this hit list. And the second is we're going to walk out of here with the framework for your explanation of services. Because I know some of you are freaking out about this, and I get it. I have people call me in the middle of the night, oh my God, I can't figure out my explanation of services, right? And they're so stressed about it. This is, this is not stressful. We're not saving lives here with the EOS, okay? We're just giving you a framework. But when, once you get it down, it is going to blow your mind at how powerful it is, okay? But I'm going to walk you step by step in how to create it, okay? And when you walk out of here today, and then your homework is going to be to practice it and give it. And then next month, I'll, I may call on people and say, hey, you're on. Get up and give it, baby. We're ready. Okay? Because should you be able to give it in front of a group of people, yes or no? Yes. yes. And listen, we're, we're, you're just sharing what you believe, right? It shouldn't be that difficult. But some people say, well, I feel scripted. The way I'm going to show you how to do this should never feel scripted. This is what you believe at your core. This is what you're selling is you and your beliefs to other people, okay? 
So that's the two things we're going to cover today. And slowly but surely, every month, I'm going to be giving you new strategies. So within a year, you will have 10 to 15 strategies. There will never be a time you come into the week without a plan to get new customers. Everybody with me? You should never show up and go, what am I going to do today? My pipeline's low. I don't know what to do. You should have so many strategies that you say, I need to be doing this, 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 and this, okay? So let's start off with the hit list. Someone give me a good definition as your understanding of it right now of what the hit list actually is. Okay? Any? Any. New money. Don't you love the smell of new money? I just love it, right? New money. The hit list represents new money. Could new money come from old clients? Yes. Could new money come from strategic partnerships? Could new, could new money come from your current clients? Yes or no? Could new money come from referrals? Yes or no? Yes. So uh, for a minute, I want you to forget that you're a real estate agent, and I want you to pretend that you're a sports agent. Because here's what sports agents do. They target people they would like to represent and work with. They watch talent, and they say, I would like to represent this person. So they get proximity to that person. They explain their services to that person. They are competing versus other agents to represent that person. And once they get that client, they are compensated based on how well they negotiate on behalf of that person. Everybody follow me? So the better they negotiate, the higher more they get paid. If they do a great job with that person, that person goes and tells other people, look, you got to be using my agent. Imagine being the, being the agent that landed Michael Jordan. And every NBA player calling Jordan and going, who are you using, right? And the value of that. Well, the difference between sports agents and real estate agents is real estate agents come into the week typically in a very reactive mindset, which means they come in and they wait on things to come in. What I'm trying to get you to think like is this. I'm trying to get you to target people you would like to work with and go after those people. Okay, we'll say, well, how do you do that? When, when I retired from athletic coaching, I started my business with nothing. No money, no, loans, no lines of credit, no nothing, no investors. And I'm like, what am I going to do? i got to go out and get customers. Well, what if I targeted the 50 most successful people in my market? Because successful people typically have money, and they hang around other successful people, right? So I reached out to these people, and I said, hey, I'm just starting my business. You have been incredibly successful. I would love to buy your lunch and bring a notebook and just learn how you did it, right? And here's what I know successful people love doing. They love talking about themselves, okay? So, so what I did is I reached out to them. Forty-six of those people took a meeting with me. Four of them were too busy being fabulous, okay? Forty-six of them, and I, and I went, I bought their lunch, and I just said, how did you become so successful? And I took notes. And they would talk for about 30 minutes, right? And then they would, at some point, stop talking, and what would they say? Now tell me about what you're doing, Coach Bird. I know you just retired. I'm glad you asked, right? I'm starting a coaching company and I'm going to use this stuff I hear sports to help, right? Every one of those meetings yielded referrals. All those successful people said to me, oh, I know who exactly you need to be working with. That's how I started my business. And so I, I was started right out of the gates, right? Now what did I do? I targeted them. I went after them. I got in front of them. I got access to them. So I want you to quit thinking of I go to the office and I wait on something to happen and then I chase leads. I want you to start thinking of every week, I come into the week with a hit list of people I'm going after. And I'm actually targeting people. Those people are most likely right in the middle of my current business. Everybody with me today? And so, so I want you to think of this hit list is when I come into the week, the number, so what I, what I could be doing, so let's just go through this again. Where could my hit list, because I'm trying to get you to come into the week with how many people on your hit list? Anybody remember? Yeah, five to ten every week. I'm trying, when you come into the week and you have a planner, what I'm trying to get you to do is I, I'm trying to get you to say, look, every single week you're coming into this with new money. Okay, so let's go through those. The new money could come from where? So let's say you're coming into this week. Let's say it's Sunday. You're sitting down and, and, and you're relaxing and you're mapping your week out and you say, all right, this week I'm going after some people. Give me the places that I can go after them. Okay, so one could be past clients. Now, let's talk about this. What are the stats? 
less than 9% of people remember their real estate agent's name after the transaction. Is that good or bad for the real estate industry? Real bad. 98% of agents never call a customer back once they put them in a home. The average person will buy four to six homes in their lifetime and the referability should be 5.7 referrals. So when you don't call your customers back after you put them in a home, you're potentially, at the price point you're selling, you're potentially losing 100,000 or more dollars. Okay, and when you're negotiating with people, always remember this, people are more motivated by what they'll lose than what they'll gain. You follow me? So I'm trying to tell you, you're losing about 100,000 bucks when you don't do this. That could be in your pocket right now. Okay, so, so what would be a good system after I sell a person a house? Because this is, because you may say, three people on my hit list or three of my past clients already put in a house. And they're on my hit list this week for new money. So what would be a good system after you? Pretend you sold Coach Bird a big house and it's beautiful and I loved working with you. And what happened? What happens after we're finished, after the transaction's over? To give, give me some feedback on what would happen. What could I expect? I'm calling them a week or two later to see okay. how everything went. Okay. Okay. All right. What happens after the first week? <clears throat> after the first week after that call, or what did they do? From that first week after that call. Um, send them a handwritten thank you note saying thank you for okay. being on the phone with me. Okay. Please let me. You know, I am here for you for whatever. Great. You need. What happens after that? Um, uh, maybe a week later or so, reach back out to them and ask them. You know, I, I really enjoy working with you. I want to work with people like you. I okay. You Great. Great. All right, good. So, so let's think about this. She's, she's got some good things. Let's think about it this way. When does buyer's remorse kick in when a person buys a house? Within 30, listen to this, don't miss this, within 30, typically within 30 seconds after they sign the papers. And you know why? What have I done? Can I afford this payment? Oh my God, I love the old house, blah, blah, blah. So the best agents I coach after the closing, go right out to their car and they pick that phone up and they call that customer back right then. And they say, gosh, this is a beautiful house. I am so proud of you. Because when you're there for people at insecure moments of their life, it sticks. When people are insecure, they're looking for some confidence from somebody. And my theory is when you're low on confidence, you can borrow from somebody else. So the best agents I coach, call them right after that. Great, I love representing you. I just want to tell you again, man, this is a great, great experience. You're going to love this house. Then they typically call them two days after. So it's 30, right after they get done with the closing, then it's two days after. How's it going? Are you loving the house? Is there anything I can do? And it may not be time to ask for a referral yet. Let them get, right? Let them get in there, right? Then they call them two weeks after. And then they call them two months after. Okay? Two days, two weeks, two months. Takesha? Well, one of the things that I heard just recently that I thought would be something to add into the conversation is um, that I've heard that agents actually um, reach out to them and give them like a, let's say, Christy, a Christy Wilson um, mm -hmm. list of like resources that mm -hmm. help them with issues that happen in their homes. So having a Christy So here's what I would do if I was selling real estate. I would create some, to Takesha's point, some memorable experience after I put them in the house. Could be we're going to have a barbecue on me and you can invite all your friends over. I get all the people I'm coaching in the pool business to say, hey, when you get this pool up and running, we're going to have a big grill out, invite all your friends, it's on me, and we're going to celebrate this pool being finished. Does that make sense? So after the experience, think of one thing you can do that would separate you. The moving company I use, here's a cool thing. I use the moving company when I get done. They, they, the husband and wife cook you a pecan pie after the moving experience. Okay, and I remember the first time they gave it to me. He, he called me and said, Coach, I got something important for you. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm really busy. Can you ship it to me? Because I thought he was going to send me some crappy little gift, you know, and I understand. But I, I'm like, I'm really busy. And he's like, no, I got to meet you. And I'm like, well, meet me at the Sam's at 3.30. It's almost like a drug deal. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, meet me, meet me at Sam's parking lot 3.30 this afternoon. He's a big six foot, six foot five dude. He gets out of his car and he's got, he's got a pie. And I'm like, he said, my wife and I always like to thank our customers. 
And so we bake our customers a pecan pie when this is over. Okay? Now, my wife never saw that pie. Don't tell her, okay? Because I never even took it home. It went straight to the office, and I ate all of it, okay? And I know we're filming this, so I love you, sweetheart. But my point is, I've never forgotten that. So anytime someone calls me and says, I'm moving, who do I need to call? I don't say two men in a truck or two boys in a men or little boys moving or whatever they are. I always say what? There's one guy you need to call. He's very professional, and when it's over, you get a pecan pie. Now, isn't that cool? How much did that cost him? See, real estate agents, don't, they, don't, they don't do any stuff like this. So, so how many referrals am I looking for after the transaction? 5.7. So, so here's what a lot of people do. They automate it. Automation does not touch my heart. Automation does not cause me to turn and refer you. I don't mind if you send automated follow-ups, but what you gotta have to do is include human touches and follow-ups as part of that, okay? I've got an agent in North Carolina that goes to every one of his past customers in October and November, and he goes to their house to make sure their houses have been winterized properly, okay? So he'll call all of his customers and say, hey, winter's coming. I just wanna come out to your house and make sure Nothing's, you know, no pipes are going to bust or anything. Think about his referability. How many other agents you know doing that? So he'll spend a couple days in a week going out to all of his customers' homes and making sure not everything's winterized properly. So you don't have to do big things, you know, as, as George W. Bush says, it's not rocket surgery, okay? It's not rocket surgery, all right? You, you, you don't have to do big things, you just have to do something. And, and so, one, so when you come into this week, how many of you believe that you could have, there should be some past clients on your hit list, yes or no? So that's one place, one thing we could be doing. What's the second thing we could be? Where else do we get them? Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. So let's say, theoretically, that I have not been fabulous about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have been. I'm just saying. Theoretically. Um, I mean, theoretically. Um, and, and I'm better about it with some people than others. It's weird because yeah. I don't have a system. It's hodgepodge. Yeah. When I think of it, I do it. And if I know you really well, I'll call you. And if I don't know you really well, then maybe I don't. Because now when, I'm call, now when I call, what am I saying? If they haven't heard from me, you, you, you got to. If you are saying this, you got to confront the elephant in the room, which is, hey, I have done a pitiful job of following up with you, yeah. and that is on me, okay? And I want to take full responsibility. I loved working with you, right? Mike Hardwick at Churchill tells this story of him being his brand new house. If you've never been to Mike's house, you got to go see it because it's a beautiful house. And 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 there was an agent that walked up to him at his open house and said, "Why didn't you use me?" I mean, I did your last house, and he looked right at the agent and said, I haven't heard from you in 13 years. That's why I didn't use you. I, he said, I love the experience with you. You did a great job. You could have represented me on this new multi-million dollar house, but you never followed up with me. I mean, isn't it, isn't it a little bit of an entitlement mindset to believe 13 years later somebody should use you? Come on. So my point is, I, I, just remember this. I do want the 5.7 referrals. And if I want that, I'm going to have to do my work. So I just call it what it is. Hey, we dropped the ball. I accept full responsibility for this. I, I loved working with you. I need to do a better job of staying in your life. And if that's okay, I'd love to just, right? Mm -hmm. Top of mind, high touch, high frequency. High touch, high frequency. High touch, high frequency. You with me? So think about the people you refer right now. They're not top of your mind, all right? So where else? So this is, now remember, I'm building my hit list because in a minute you're going to build yours. Okay, where else can I pick up my hit list? Okay, now, this is a big one. Strategic partnership. See, most agents don't think like this. They think direct to consumer. And that means I'm only, I can only go out here and sell you a house or represent you buying or selling a house. I need you to think, think like this. You have something of value, somebody else has something of value, you got something they want, they got something you want. Let's get together and partner on this, okay? And, and that's a strategic partnership. I do these all the time. Maybe they've got a big list of people that I want access to. I've got something they don't have. I say, you know, I'll give you this if you'll give me this or give me access to that group. So I'm constantly thinking that sometimes I'm not going direct to consumer, okay? So, so here's an example I would use. We coach a guy called the Big Kahuna. I'm sure you've heard of him. He's, he's a... Uh, he has a Aloha air, air conditioning company and he took something that was very boring, heating and cooling, and he tried to make it fun. So he's this really interesting guy, he wears a white built hat called Aloha, he's in my coaching program, and I'm constantly talking about partnerships. So he emails me and says, 
Coach, how do I partner with Churchill Mortgage to be the official heating and cooling company, right? Because they're doing, X, they did 600 deals this you know, past month. And I got the email, turned around and sent it right to Mike Hardwick. Mike, I endorsed this guy. He's in my coaching program. What can we do to get him in the door with you? Mike turned around and sent it directly to his director of marketing. Hey, let's send out an email. You see what I'm saying? And within a minute, he's got a door open to all that business. Now, how hard was that? It wasn't hard at all. So I'm constantly thinking, how do I partner with a person? For you, it may be divorce attorneys, CPAs. It may be great mortgage originators, great insurance people, successful business partners. Does that make sense? So part of your hit list every week, I'm constantly looking like, like who can I help over here that can turn around and give me access to these people here? But most agents don't think like that, okay? So your hit list could be strategic partnership. I call them feeder systems. Okay, you're going to hear them called, uh, Christy, I'm, heard you, I'm sure you heard them called channel accounts, right? So channel accounts is a word for this. I call them multipliers or feeder systems. That's where I got a relationship with you and you give me access to a whole bunch of people. Okay, but, but here's the deal. I have, to have, I have to have enough cheese on the mousetrap to leverage you for you to go want to do that. If not, it's a little fake relationship between you and I. Okay, so, so when I teach you about negotiating, which I will in the next couple of sessions, when you're negotiating, the first thing you got to know is there's got to be a big enough win for you to want to promote me. If it's just like, hey, will you do this? Well, yeah, I'll do that. There's got to be something big on the other end of that for both of us, right? And so strategic partnership, and you need to be doing these all the time. Who has a great strategic partnership right now with someone that's really working? Anybody that's feeding you lots of deals? Where did it come from? Okay. And meeting a wholesaler, um, and also Christy referred me. Christy knew them too, and so yeah. she ended up referring them to me for a couple of things many years ago, and now right. I get, um, I've had 27 listings with them this year. Woo! Go on, girl. I love it. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. 27. Remember the power of one relationship? You don't have to get 10 relationships. Sometimes you just got to get one. One relationship, 27 opportunities out of one person. You need to quit thinking, I have to go get everybody in Nashville. You need to start thinking, I need to get this one, and this one, and this one. That needs to be on your hit list. So if I were building my hit list, I may have, let's just say today, I may have two past clients, one big strategic partnership I'm working with. All right, what would be a third one? What about current clients? Now this is different than past clients. Past clients have used you, the transaction is over. Current clients, clients we're, we're moving this deal right now. So here's my trick I want to give you, and this is worth a lot of money, so don't miss it. Is, the, is it true that during the day, people are constantly calling you asking for your time, energy, and expertise as it relates to real estate, yes or no? Yes. And you are exchanging your expertise to help them advance their mission, yes, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So there is an exchange there, okay? You're not charging them any extra money for that exchange but you're giving away what may have taken you years to build. Mm -hmm. Your knowledge, your skill, your desire, your confidence. So people call all the time and say, can I talk to Coach Burke? I want to spend five minutes with Coach Burke. Can I get coffee with Coach Burke? And I say, sure. I said, but, but, but this is an exchange. I'm not charging you any extra money for this, but I'm going to be giving you something, and because of that, I'm going to want you to give me something. So let's say you call me in and you say, hey, I don't really understand the EOS. Coach, will you look at my EOS? And I say, sure, send it to me. I'll give you some feedback. We'll ship it back to you. When we get done with that, I'm going to ask him a question. And that question is, was this valuable for you? Of which he's going to say what? Yes. yes. Absolutely. And I may say, great. I only got one thing I want to ask you. If it was valuable for you, who else could it be valuable for that we need to be helping? Almost every time they say there's three people I know right now that could use your help. Right? I never answer a customer question without asking it at the end. Was this valuable for you? Yes, it was. If it's valuable for you, who else do we need to be helping? Right? So I'm working with a guy in Lone Depot. He's in our coaching program. He's in California. So we coach him online. I'm on the phone with him, right? He's at Lone Depot, which is one of the biggest mortgage companies in the world. Think Lone Depot, Quicken, right? And so I get done asking him this question. He calls me in. I answer the question. I say, Frank, was this valuable for you? Yes, sir, it was. Frank, how do we get into Loan Depot? Not just how do you bring me one more mortgage originator. Frank, who do we need to know 
that's making a decision to hire coaches at, at the whole company of Lone Depot. So he may say, Coach, I got exactly who you need to talk to. Thank you. Can you make that introduction for me? You see that exchange of value there? So what you should be doing is right here, when they're asking you questions, should you not be asking for that exchange, right? This is a whole lot better question than saying, hey, do you know anybody buying or selling real estate? See how awkward that question is? The way you're asking it here is much different. So your current clients, what's the highest point of energy of a sale? When is the highest point of energy in the selling? That's right, mm -hmm. at the beginning. Because they haven't had an opportunity not to like you yet. <laughs> or find a flaw in you yet, and they will, right? The highest point of energy is in the beginning of a relationship. So remember this, if we acted at the end of a relationship like we acted at the beginning, there'd never be an end. Isn't that a good one? Mm -hmm. Tweet that one out, okay? <laughs> so, it, it, but isn't it true? If we acted with every person we met, in the end of a relationship, like we acted in the beginning, there'd never be an end. Well, that's what happens, is once we've been doing business with you, now I, got, now I see some flaws in you, now I don't like this, now I don't like that. The highest point of energy is in the beginning. So when, in the beginning is when you got, right, you got contract. Why, should, why are you not extracting the referrals from that? Hey, if this has been awesome for you like it has, who else do we need to be helping? And you know why? Because we believe like gravitates toward like. Association breeds assimilation. So if I'm loving working with you, I guarantee I'll love working with your friends. Okay? So now we got three places for our hit list. All right, are there any others that we're missing? Because we're building our hit list every week because we're sports agents, remember? We're coming into the market trying to find new money. Am I missing anything here? I got past clients, I got current clients, I got strategic partners. Can you think of any other place we pick up business? Okay, all right, so let's call that one low-hanging fruit. Now, I wish I could teach you a concept called extraction. It, optimization is you and I have a relationship, but I am not extracting the full capacity and referability out of that relationship. You follow me? So it's like I got your deal but I haven't really got in there and, and got to know you enough to, to pull out the other six deals you could bring me. You follow me? Now let me give you an example. We have a guy named Corey Jacobs in our coaching program who was on the board at NAFA. NAFA is an insurance advisory just like the real estate associations, right? NAFA gives access to me to get in front of all the insurance people and he's on the board. So I go to him and I say, man, I love working with you. He's with a new, new uh, swanky firm in Franklin and I say, hey, how do, I, how do I help you get me in there to work with everybody because this has been valuable for you? And he puts me in front of all of those guys, which opens up 25 more insurance guys, right? And I say, you know what? I know you're on the board at NAFA. Would it be valuable if I spoke to all those people at NAFA and could you make that happen? Absolutely. I'd put you on the stage here. So now I've got two relationships out of there, but what's the multiplying effect of that? What if I do the NAFA event and they say, boy, we really liked it. We want you to speak at the Tennessee State NAFA Convention. We speak at the Tennessee NAFA Convention and Bill, who do we meet? We meet the national director of NAFA and he says, we want you to come to DC at some point, speak to the national NAFA. From that one relationship with Corey Jacobs, who's in one program, we got to all of his people, all the state of Tennessee and all of the national insurance advisors through one relationship. That's called optimization. Everybody see that? So lots of agents don't think like that. So I represented you. I don't know why I keep coming back to you. I must like you, Jenny. You've got a lot of good energy today. Okay, so I get you, right? But here's, I'm not done, because she's got friends, right? She's got associates. She's involved in an association. She's got a, a, a women's group that meets over here. She's got this, but, but I, have, I haven't slowed down long enough to get all that. All I did was get her, and then, and then because I'm short-sighted, I moved on to the next person. And I didn't sell all those people, which is a shame because I really helped her and I love working with her. That's called optimization. How many agents in here are doing a good job of this? You understand? You see how much money we're losing here? Okay, and I'm going to tell you one more thing, then I'm going to let you work on this. I worked in the insurance, uh, not in the insurance, in the, in the furniture business with a guy who owned Ashley Furniture. Not the main guy, because that's a $5 billion company. But I'm talking about like a local guy. And he's real intense, former military dude. And I go to Clarksville, Tennessee, and the very first meeting is real intense. And he's like, we're hiring you because you're structured. And, 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 he, and, he, and he looks at me and he said, do you know how much money the average person spends on furniture in their lifetime? And I'm like, oh, ooh, I didn't get that one. I missed it. Um, <laughs> no, sir. He's like $75,000. Average person, course of their lifetime. 
will spend $75,000 on furniture. Think about the first apartment you had, first little house you had, right? And then he got real intense and he pulled me in. He said, you know how much of that I want? All of it. <laughs> he said, because I want their friends, I want their relatives, I want their cousins, I want their kids, I want all of it. And that taught me a lesson. You're sitting right now on acres of diamonds. You really are. You're sitting on probably 6, 10, 15, 20 relationships that you ain't even working. You're just not extracting. You're not getting in there and really doing your work. You know why? Too busy. Too busy being fabulous, right? When what we got to do is slow down and just start thinking, how do we take, get six deals out of this, okay? So I want to stop talking for just a second, and I want you to talk to the person beside you and say, here's where I will commit to getting better. Here's where I will commit to getting better in one of these four areas. And then I actually want you to build, uh, build out your hit list, if you're building it out for this week. Build out three, five, seven names that you need to be working this week to generate some new money, okay? Take off. <laughs> so the planner, I developed this planner, so it's tied to exactly what I'm teaching you. All of the categories are in the beginning, it's like a glossary of terms, okay? And then it goes into how to map out a week. So this is the week, then it goes into your days, okay? And so Eric has these over here if you'd like to get one of those, but I, I, I'm a big Franklin Covey person. I used Franklin Covey for years. I'm a huge disciple of Covey's work. And so, but the Franklin Covey planners were not tied to a selling system. And this is tied specifically to the system I'm teaching you. So you say, I'm a digital person. I don't write things down. I, listen, I use my calendar. I use the notes in my phone, my iPhone, on my computer. Every study in the world shows me that when you write something down, it imprints it in the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So the reason you still need to write things down the night before is because it imprints it in your brain before you go to sleep. Okay, and then so then I go into a day. Okay, so that's the monster producer planner is tied to everything I'm teaching you. Every category is in there. Okay, so if you're interested in that or anything else, million dollar follow up we'll get into, person of interest we'll get into. And the, for those of you that came to person of interest, thank you for coming. Uh, one thing we figured out as a team is that's a very big topic for me to unpack in 55 minutes, okay? And so we're looking at doing possibly a full day or a day and a half of nothing but person of interest because it's really big and it could be a complete game changer. We have one agent uh, in Murfreesboro that read person of interest. He was doing uh, roughly 43 deals a year, took the concepts in person of interest, built his own brand, and he's on track to do about 115 deals this year. So he said that was a game changer for him, understanding that he, he didn't want to just be a real estate agent. He wanted to be a brand, right? He wanted to be a person of interest. And so he took what was in the book, uh, t t attacked it, and then really, really blew up his business because he went out and got a lot more attention. That's the number one thing he was doing, okay? Now, any questions from the first session that I can help you with? Hit list represents what? New money. New money. We can find that new money where? Everywhere. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Money changes hands when problems are solved. And there's somebody out there right now who's got a real estate problem. I guarantee it. I was looking at a property yesterday. And uh, I'll, I'm looking at properties every week, guys. I'm looking at things I can make money with. I'm, I'm trying to figure out deals to leverage. I'm 1031 exchanging properties into other properties. I'm building commercial buildings. I'm buying commercial buildings. I'm looking at buying apartment complexes. There's all kinds of things I'm doing every week. Now, I'll tell you that because I'm a coach. I, right? I, that's what I do for a living. But, but most people, as they begin to build successful businesses, start putting money into real estate. Right? So don't assume that people are not buying real estate and if you're just selling to one little person buying a house, there's all kinds of real estate deals that are happening you could be involved in if you just get your mind out there. Okay? So everybody's committing to the hit list. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Don't make me run you around the parking lot if you don't have this, okay? <laughs> Because I'll pull out my old coaching days. I used to, you know, I won't tell you everything I did in those days. So, explanation. Suicides. Suicides, yes, that was one. Okay. Well, yeah, you had a doctor's appointment. Yeah, a doctor's note. Uh, I never accepted the doctor's notes. So, so, so here's the question. Now that we got a hit list, now that we know we're going to be outbound calling, now we got to have something to say. And we got to have something that's good, right? Here is the framework of a world-class explanation of services, okay? So number one, you always lead with what you believe, okay? So I'm going to give you the whole thing and I'm going to break it down. People do business with other people that believe the same things they do, 
okay? For example, I believe every person deserves the right to have a professional represent them when they buy, sell, build, or finance real estate. How many people believe that? <laughs> if you've ever done a deal with a, with a not a professional, you get what I'm saying, right or wrong? So I believe if you're going to go out there and spend money in real estate, you better have somebody who knows what they're doing representing you. End of discussion. And I get almost 100% agreement when I say that. I believe there's a difference between a house and a home. That a house is made up of sticks and bricks and a home is made up of memories. I personally believe that your home should be an oasis, a place to escape from the pressures of life to a place of comfort. See all these beliefs I have about, right? So if I were selling real estate like you, I would lead with these things. So you and I first sit down. This is our first interaction with each other. I say there's a few things I believe, right? And I may say there's three things I believe. One, two, three. Let me tell you why I believe that. The second part of the EOS, when you explain why you believe what you believe, gives the other party the chance to believe it too. Okay? This gives me a chance to believe the same things you. Now, when two are in agreement, this is biblical. When two are in, two or more in agreement, what happens? I want you to remember this. Part of selling is getting agreement between two parties. The way I get agreement is I lead with what I believe and I see if you believe it too. And if you do, now we're cooking. If you don't, it's okay. But we're probably not going to be good partners for each other. Everybody follow me? Like I see real estate firms, like I believe in culture. I believe in team. I believe together we could do way more than we could individually. And so it drives me crazy to see real estate firms that don't believe in culture. It's like a big free agent nation. Everybody follow me here? It's like, hey, all agents out for themselves. There's no team. There's no helping each other. There's no nothing. You got your little sign here. I do not believe in that. That's why those firms don't hire me. Because I believe in this. I believe in corporate coming together. I believe in leveraging all of the experiences, right? Which is why I'm working with you. Because y'all believe the same things I do. You understand what I'm saying? That doesn't make me right and those other ones wrong. It just means we don't believe the same things. So what if you say, I believe every person deserves the right to have a professional, and right out of my mouth is, you know, I can get a real estate agent. They're a dime a dozen. What am I telling you in my first statement? Don't we don't believe the same things. What, is that a red light to you, yes or no? Absolutely. Yes. You mean you don't value what I so, do and you want me to do it for free? So, so here, that's exactly what <laughs> Come on. Can I get an amen, Julie? <laughs> now, so, so let me tell you. Let me tell you how fast I figured this out. This is why I'm telling you, you will know in the first 15 seconds if you have a partner or not. Yesterday I'm talking to a coach that used to work for another firm. And I'm just kind of brainstorming with this person. And I believe in growth. I believe in top line revenue. I believe in pushing toward big, huge numbers. Everybody with me? I believe in going, baby. I ain't talking about kind of going. I mean going. We'll figure it out. Well, this coach said to me, well, I really don't believe and rapid growth. I really don't think we have everything in place like we need to to grow. I believe in this. And I knew in that conversation, we can like each other, but you and I are not going to get along with each other. I believe in taking it to the limit. You believe in slow this, right? You understand what I'm saying? That's okay. It doesn't make me right and her wrong. It just means we don't believe the same things. And that's okay. Okay? So I know in the first 15 seconds, Here's what I believe, here's why I believe it. So why would you say, let's say you believe every person deserves the right to have a professional represent them. How, what, what kind of, how would you back that up with your premise? How would you support that? What would you say? Christy, if you, if you led with that, what, what, why would you say, let me tell you why I believe that. Because I am dealing with the largest asset you will ever have. Okay, there you go. So, so here's the deal. This is the largest asset you're ever going to own. This is why you need a professional representing you. Uh, another, so that's a good one. I may also say, the average real estate agent will do less than seven transactions a year. And do you really want someone representing you on this big a deal with a person who is not professional? Right? I draw distinctions. I draw distinctions. Okay? I'm, so I'm trying, so, so I'm going to get to, if you're just getting started, how to leverage the firm's experience versus your own. So don't panic. So first, here's what I believe. Here is why I believe it. Now this one trips a lot of people up. Because of my belief, 
This is what I do for you. Pretend they don't know anything because they don't think about real estate like you do. So you need to say there's three things I do for my clients. Okay? So let me give you some examples. I take very complicated real estate transactions and make them simple. I help regulate your emotions because I realize when you're dealing with your home, you're dealing with your memories. And so it could get emotional. I also negotiate on your behalf to get you the most money I can get you. Those are just three examples of what you could do. And you need to literally pretend that they don't know anything. I mean, like literally reduce it to the ridiculous. Okay, people ask me all the time, like, what does a coach do? Like, what do you do? So I have to go, I package and deliver content in a way that gets people to take action. I take complicated growth and I break it down and make it simple. Okay? I get large groups of people towards some big number based on my unique past and my unique experiences. See, see, what if I just said I coach people? Are you a life coach? Are you a business coach? Are you a financial coach? See, what I'm trying to do is get very specific because I want you thinking that you are a specialist. You're not a generalist. You got a very special skill set doing three things. Bam, bam, bam. There was a question? Yeah, right here. When, when you say specifics, at this point, are you doing specifics about your, your job and, and your the, the effect that you'll give more specifics in, this is the way I like to market your house specific. You could do that. I, mean, is that I would say this. Or? I would say based on my unique, I always take everything that's common and give it a unique name. I have a unique three-step process for getting more eyeballs on your property than anybody else. Right? I, I, I spend a lot of time studying negotiation so I can negotiate the highest price for you. Get, get specific. There's three things I do, but don't get, don't get in over their head. Don't get in the weeds. Right. But it's specific in relation more to you and your you. services you. at this point That's right. still versus specific to why I would be the best fit to sell your property and what my company brings to the yeah. table as far as specific. So let me just ask it this way. What, what, what do, get, just give me three things that you think good real estate agents do for their clients. Okay, that, I like this one. Communicate. Okay, Act, so, so I want you to be very specific. I actively listen. I don't just listen. I actively listen. I told my wife once I was going to teach a class in active listening. And she said, you don't know anything about active listening. <laughs> if anybody's going to teach it, I'm going to teach it. <laughs> so, but active listening, right? I actively listen. I do this. I do this. What else do good real estate agents do for their clients? You said communicate. Be specific. Weekly. Don't Don't just say communicate say, I believe, here's one thing, I, I believe in customer engagement, not customer service. So what I believe in is over communication. Mm -hmm. And so this means I'm going to communicate with you once a week, once every other day. My, my agent communicates with me every day, by the way. Every day, takes me to breakfast every Saturday. He, he communicates deals, opportunities, coaching, not, you see what I'm saying? He's constantly involved in my life every single day, which I want him there. Because he's giving me counsel about these deals. I mean, that's a good relationship, right? Imagine him doing that for 25 other people. Okay? So, so what else do good agents do? Do they take complexity out of the deal? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Do they take something that seems real complicated and stressful and make it simple? Yes or no? I think they anticipate. There. Now, you, now you're talking. See, this, this, go ahead. They see things that the client can't. Okay, there you go. You may say, I, I, one of mine is, I believe you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. You're going to get very emotional. Typically, most people get emotional during. What I do is I anticipate and see things that you probably won't see. Okay? So you need to be able to explain this. There's three things I do for my clients. Right? And if you don't know what it is you do, what happens is you begin using very generic, commoditized terms. we got a great firm. We've been in business a long time. we got a strong name. All those are true. But is it not true that another real estate firm in Nashville could say the same thing? Mm -hmm. So that's a commodity. So, so a lot of times people lean on experience. They'll say, well, you know, we've been in business a long time, but they don't get specific. What I learned over the last 25 years is three things you need to know. Be very specific when you explain your services to people. Okay? All right. So this is what I do for you. Now, this is critical. Now you pivot and say, you're probably wondering how I do it different than everybody else. There are three ways 
I do it different than other real estate agents. This is your real differential advantage. This is where zebras and cheetahs comes in. A zebra looks different than every other animal in the animal kingdom. A cheetah runs faster. So give me some examples of how you could do it different than everybody else. After our first initial meeting, mm -hmm. we'll break down. I'll actively listen to you, mm -hmm. what you've got to say. And after that, we will break down in small steps what you want to get done before we list your house. Okay. All right. So you say that there's, there's real... There's three things I think I do different than other agents. So remember this. Take everything and give it a unique name. Make it a unique process. I have a simple three-step process we call this. Okay? People are buying systems, processes. Like when I taught person of interest the other day, I say there's six steps to becoming a person of interest and there's seven ingredients of all people of interest. Because I was coached to give everything a unique name. Nothing's general. Nothing's generic. I have pro I'm selling process and systems. Okay, the reason you're hiring me is because I have a unique process to accelerate the sale of your house. Okay, three-step system. Okay, this is how I do it different than everybody else. Okay, where does your differential advantage in life come from, by the way? Experience. That's right, your past. Based on so I, I say, based on my unique past. And my unique experiences, I've really been able to cultivate a skill set that can do these three things. And here's how I do it different than everybody else. Okay? And you need to know what your competitors are doing. Well, how do they do it versus how we do it? We design our coaching programs because we look at what everybody else is doing and design them differently. Like we have a live component where they don't. Okay? Well, most of their stuff is done on the phone, internet. And I say I believe in the live event comboed with technology, not the other way around. That separates us because a lot of people still believe in this right here, right? So I'm looking for differential advantages versus my competitors, okay? Now, this is critical. Who have you helped? How many people have you helped? Okay, so you can say, just this year I've been able to put 36 families in a new home. Over the course of my lifetime, I've helped 10,000 people. What if you're new? What you can use, you can leverage the firm. Right? Or you can say, just last week, I helped somebody just like you. I was working with a young couple. They're buying their first house. I know exactly what you're experiencing. We just went through this last week. That is social proof. Okay? Now, once you start to build your business, you can leverage the size of clients you work with, who you work with, right? So a lot of times when I get here, I'll say, I've been able to help this company and this company and this company and this company. And they're typically brand names. So what, what, why would we need that in there? Credibility. That's right. These are credibility indicators. So let's pretend you and I don't know each other. We just met. I need to know, are you legit or not? And one way I know you're legit by who you've worked with. Who have you helped in your lifetime? This is very critical. So let me tell you a list of some of the people we've worked with or just last week we worked with you or blah, blah, blah. Okay? Now, all of this is kind of build, building a cadence. Here's what we believe. Here's why we believe it. Here's what we do. Here's how we do it different. Here's everybody we've done it for. And then there's the ask. Now, now don't freak out about the ask because a lot of people think, oh my gosh, i got to ask them. You can just sell them to something next. So the sale could be, Christy, if this sounds good to you, uh, what would prohibit us from moving forward to the next meeting? You, right? You, you, yeah, exactly. See, you don't have to sell them the house today. You can just sell them to the next meeting. If this sounds good to you, can we go ahead and get an agreement that I can represent you? It's not always making the big sale, right? Sometimes it's just to the next thing. Like if you watch me sell, I'll say, if this sounds good to you, will you come sit in on Monster Producer one time for free? I give away something. I don't try to sell them. I try to get them in the room and let the, let the deal sell them. So... So this ask right here is just asking to move on to round two. So I may say, um, if I can do this for you, just like I've done it for everybody else, what would stop us from moving forward with each other? Or I may say, out of everything I shared with you, what piqued your interest the most? That's a good Southern way to ask it. If you feel like that first one's too strong. If I'm having a bad day, I may say, have you seen enough to make a decision? Now quit playing around. <laughs> I'm tired of playing with you, okay? Have you seen enough to make a decision or not? 
I'll get on the phone with people that are in the pipeline, and Takesha will tell you this. I'll say, give me that, give me the phone number of that person. You know, that's, that's kind of told us, yes, maybe. And I'll get on the phone and say, look, have you seen enough to make a decision or not? Because I've seen enough to know, I want to work with you. You got a problem. We got a solution. What is stopping you from moving forward? And I will literally be that strong sometimes, especially when I get to my, my, my rope with a person, right? Because here's what I'm saying. There's 7 billion people in the world. We don't have to work with you, right? Now, look, we're not chasing you. We don't have to do business with you. We will survive without you, okay? So do, are you in or are you out, right? Sometimes it just gets to that point. But what we do in the South is I call it sales flirting. We're not direct. So we say, are you ready? Are you busy? Can you? Okay, okay. And we don't get right to the point. Have you seen enough to make a decision? I may ask, is there anything that would prohibit you from moving forward with me? Is there anything I don't know? So now, what kind of confidence will you have when you have this down pat? I mean, it will be ridiculously strong. Okay? So here's how we're going to start. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to write three belief statements. Just write three beliefs. That's why I say, would you rather know in 15 seconds or chase somebody for 15 months? How many of y'all have chased somebody for 15 months? Trying to convince them to believe the same things you do. So I want you to picture this. There's a line. Let's just say it's a million people deep. They step right up to the line and you say, here's what I believe, do you believe it too? And if they do, great, step over here. If they don't, okay, step over here. See how easy that was? You're not chasing. You're attracting other people that believe the same things you do. Everybody follow me. That means they see the value in you. They appreciate it. There is an exchange of energy here. You are not supplicating to them because they have something that you want. You, you actually have something they want. So when you get clear about this, this is actually for you as much as it is for them. I do not want to be in partnership with people who don't believe the same things I do. You, you follow me here? We don't have to line up on everything, but there's something, right? Like, for example, I believe invested partnership versus one-sided relationship. I don't want to do all the work and then complain about it. You ever had a problem like that? I want, when we're in the boat with each other, we're in the boat with each other. That means I'm going to promote you, and I expect you to promote me. This is how I choose my insurance agent, my real estate agent, the attorneys I use. This is not a one-sided relationship here. We are vested partners. That means when I succeed, you succeed. You follow me here? So, so that's one of my core beliefs. So when you get these belief statements down, it's like here, there's three things we believe, okay? Now, you say, when do I give this EOS? When should I share this with them? Well, at, some, at the appropriate time. So think of it this way. We built a lot of rapport in the South. So, so let's say you and I are thinking to do business with each other. We're first just going to build some rapport with each other, right? How's it going? We got a mutual, uh, his father-in-law used to be one of my coaches, so we got mutual partnership with each other. We know, we could tell stories, but at some point, if I was pitching him my services, we're going to get past the rapport, and I call it the moment of truth. At some point, we're going to quit talking about the weather and kids, father-in-laws, and he's going to look at me and be like, go. And instead of just leading with what I do, I'm going to say, well, let me tell you, there's really three things I believe. And I'm going to look right at his face to see if he believes the same things. If I'm on the phone, I'm going to listen to his language, his tonality. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to listen. Are we on the same page here? I can usually pick up on a phone call. We don't believe the same things. Let's move on. Okay? So, so I may say, here's what I believe. Let me tell you why I believe that. Because of that belief, there's really two or three things my company does. There's a couple ways we do it different than everybody else because I'm sure you've been looking, right? Let me tell you some of the people we're doing it for. And if that sounds good to you, what would stop us from kind of going to the next round with each other, right? And I can have that conversation in 15 seconds. I'm going to know in the first 15 seconds if he's interested or not, okay? So I really believe, for example, that in transformation versus transaction. I believe transaction means I can discard you when this is over. Most real estate agents are discarded after the transaction, right or wrong. That means I never need you again the rest of my life. I, don't believe, I believe in transformation. I believe if we do this right, you and I are going to be partners for a long time with each other. And that's what I want out of this. Okay? So, so has everybody got their beliefs? 
One pop quiz question. Do your beliefs have to specifically relate to real estate? No. no. You can say, I believe in a noisy and distracted world. I believe in giving my clients my total and undivided attention. I, you know, it doesn't have to be real estate specific. Okay? I believe in this, I believe in this, I believe in this. Okay? Now, why do you have to tell me why you believe it? Because we've got to connect. At a, at a yeah. Level. So this is Simon Sinek. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Mm -hmm. why, why did you get into this? If I boiled you down, a lot of people that freak out about the EOS, here's why I'll, I'll catch them at a relaxed moment. And I'll say, why do you do what you do? I mean, just tell me. And they'll give me one statement. And I'm like, that's it. Right? Like if you pin me down and say, why do you do what you do? I'll say, look, because I believe a good coach can change your whole freaking life. Right? That's it. That's all you need to know. That's why I do what I do every day. Why do you do what you do every day? So here's what I believe. Here's why I believe it. That gives me a chance to believe it too. Okay? And if we got agreement, if two people are in agreement, now we're going to move that ball down the field. Now, so give me maybe one statement. This is why I believe that. This is what it is I do, okay? So I want you to take a second and, and write down what it is you think you specifically do for your clients. What do you specifically do for your clients? It's going to be based on your personality, your skill set, your unique abilities, okay? So take a second and write those down. Tell me how this ties into person of interest because we'll eventually get to person of interest with you. You're not a person of interest until your activity is high enough. Your circulation and activity drives up your person of interest score. That's why I always do selling system first. Then we move to person of interest. When you're circulating like I'm teaching you to circulate, people start going, man, that person is everywhere. So how does, how does this piece right here tie to person of interest? Based on what you learned yesterday. That's exactly right. You have to, to be known or famous for something specific you do. So you are known as the number one negotiator in Nashville. Right? Next week, you guys have got to hear this. The guy who wrote this book, number one negotiator in the world for the FBI, is on my podcast next Wednesday. And so I'm going to spend an hour with him picking his brain. And this is a great book if you're negotiating. Uh, and, and so he became known as the number one lead negotiator for the FBI. And I'm talking about in high pressure, high, high pressure hostage situations. Think like David Koresh, 1993, Waco, think things like that, okay? So, so his status is high because he became known for something. Most agents are not known for something. Like you should be known for, you can sell houses faster than anybody else. You can negotiate better than anybody else. You regulate emotion better than anybody else. You have deeper networks than anybody else. Okay? If you don't have something very specific you do, it's like, well, I could just get you anywhere. When two opinions are the same, one of those opinions is unnecessary. Think must have versus nice to have. Right? Must have versus nice to have. Okay? So, so this helps you become a person of interest because you become famous or known for what you do. How do you not alienate all the people who don't need that particular thing that you have, though? When you, when you uh, say that again? Sorry. If you have a particular thing, mm -hmm. you don't want to exclude all the people who don't need that thing. Potentially, but most people would tell you that there's riches in what? In niches. So you become famous and wealthy because you do something better than anybody else. That's right. See, here's what I would tell you. I'm not looking for everybody. Right. There, you know, I'm looking for people that value my skill set, what I do. Not everybody values it. So, so, so I'm only looking for people looking for me. So I do exclude a lot of people. I'm an obsessed person if you haven't figured that out. Okay, I'm talking like fanatical obsessed. I am interested in my potential at a, in a sick way, okay? So guess what? Guess what kind of people I attract? People like me. So people that say, man, you're way too much on Facebook. Oh my gosh, you're too many posts. I'm like, I ain't looking for you. <laughs> I ain't looking for somebody like you. I'm looking for somebody like me. So the people that, because I have people say, give me more. Whatever you're pumping, pump out more, right? That's the kind of person I'm looking for, and that's okay. So you become known for doing something, okay? Now, move to this one. How do you do it different? 
And this is going to stump a lot of real estate agents here. If you had to put yourself up against other, all the other agents out there, what specifically do you believe you or your team does different than other firms? Okay? So write, write out what you think it is. Okay? How do you specifically do it different? If I, if I were to hire you to represent me, how do you do, how, how will you represent me differently than other people? You have to ask questions. You have to listen to what they need and what their time frame is. And okay. Time is key, so but everybody's time frame is different. Okay. Do you think you have a unique process? Unique skill set? I mean, yeah, I'm awesome at life. <laughs> That's good. And humble. <laughs> yeah, awesome and humble. Uh, so, so I want you thinking this, because this is part of what makes you unique. Where does all of your uniqueness come from? Past, right? Every person in here has a unique past. So all, everything I think that really makes you cool in the world, it comes from your past. Your past struggle, your past heartbreak, your past experiences. So I want you to start thinking like based on my unique past and my unique experiences, I've really cultivated a unique process. So I really do it a little bit different than everybody else does, right? Okay, so, uh, so I want you thinking, now, this is kind of the elephant in the room. They may just flat out ask you, okay, I'm looking at your team versus somebody else's team. T go. Tell me how you do it different. They may just flat out ask you, but a lot of people, it's a hidden objection. That means I'm thinking it, but I don't say it. So I'm sitting there going, look, I've talked to three people, and I can't tell the difference between one and another. So then it comes down to personality. Mm -hmm. it, then it comes down to something, right? So, so it's like, I make real estate fun. Like, I know some people that make real estate very fun, and when it's over, we're all going to the CMA Festival together. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of their deal. That's their unique deal. It's not going to be stressful. When we're done, me and you are going to be buddies. We're going to be friends. We're going to hang out. It's going to be awesome. Some people are very systematic. Some people are very good one-to-one. -one. Some people listen better than other people do. Some people have a unique ability to do, uh, you know, find exactly what people are wanting. I, you got to find what makes you unique in the world and sell that. Okay, you got to sell the special. Okay, so you got to you got to find it, you got to package it, and you got to sell it. Okay, now when you get down, question. So let me ask you this: So with the difference, and, and coming back to what you're saying about unique and, and catchphrases or unique terms or, or specific mm -hmm. terms, when you use the word packaging, I guess essentially you're not. I'm not listening. Just to use that. Word, I'm not listening different, but I can come up with a different term to package it and resell. That's correct. Actively listen sounds better than listening. Sure. Okay. So so my clients have told me that I actively listen better than most of the other real estate agents they have. And what that means is I, I listen to specifically what you want and I go find it faster than they do. Because I have had the experience of telling agents what I want and then send me on a wild goose chase and waste a whole day of my life of, of sending me to things. And I'm like, you didn't listen to one thing I told you. I told you I wanted this, 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 and this. And I took a day off from work and went and looked at five properties and I would not have bought any of those properties. So how do I feel about that agent after that? You wasted my time, which is a no-no. So, so actively listening, here's what I would say. I know your time is very valuable. So, so I actively listen to exactly what you want. I weed out everything that I don't think will fit. I bring you only the best, of, right? I bring you the top three properties for you to look at and look at them fast. So be very specific when you're talking to people about what it is you do. This is why when we're selling what we sell, we say there's four things we work on. Explanation of services, selling system, follow-up, and referability. Bam, right? And, and I used to sell like very general terms. Now I just, these are four things we're gonna work on. That's it, okay? This is a pre credibility indicator. So give me an example of how you could say this. Let's say if you're an experienced agent in the room, how could you say this? Uh, for whom, or, or give me a credibility indicator. Over the course of my career, I've been able to help. There you go. I've been able to put 350 families in the home of their dreams. Over my lifetime, I've been able to help this, right? Just last week, I worked with someone just like you. Our firm has been able to help this many people over the court. You see what I'm saying? Because I need to know this credibility indicator. Would you do a, if you were 
had someone who wanted an agent that works a specific, like say a part of town. Yeah. I've been helping families buy and sell in whatever. That's perfect. Bellmead. Yes. You know, in Bellmead Links yes. for 10 years. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, yeah. yes. We're, we're tailored. We, it's okay for us to tailor it. I, I've seen that. I feel like I already do a lot of this when mm -hmm. I'm talking mm -hmm. to people, but I tailor it to what their needs are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so let me give you an example. When you're leading with your belief statements, I have a whole storehouse of beliefs. It's like, it's like they go around everywhere with me. You just don't see them. So when I'm working with operations people, I reach over and pull one out. I believe operations is the single greatest advantage a company can have. Because operations people never hear that. I do believe operations, especially if I'm coaching mortgage companies. I believe operations is the single greatest advantage a mortgage company can have but they get the least amount of training. Everybody with me? Those operation people is like, yes. What if I'm working with blue collar workers? I believe blue collar workers are the backbone of our country, but for some reason they've gotten left behind as it relates to training and development because people don't think they need it or will receive it. Those blue collar workers are like, yes. So, so depending on who I'm with, I pivot. I'm not, I believe these things. It's not like I'm just making it up, okay? So, so what I do is I've got a storehouse of beliefs and if I'm working with blue collar folks, I say, do you also know I work with Roscoe Brown Heating and Cooling or this pest care company? They'll go, oh, I didn't know you worked with other companies like mine. So if I work with, I'm selling the blue collar, did you know I also work with this blue collar, this blue collar, this blue collar? Okay, my unique background of growing up in a small town by a single mother helps me connect to people. Did you know I spent four years in the prison system? working with offenders. <laughs> yeah, I had you, didn't I? That's called an intrigue ping. Wasn't that good? I've been practicing that one, Bill. So I spent four years, I said, show me another, show me another person, a coach that spent four years in a prison system of rehabilitating offenders in the state of Tennessee. And how much I learned by going into maximum security prisons trying to turn a person's life around. Right? Because none of my contemporaries that do what I do would ever do that. You follow me? So, what, so that helps me. I can sell to local state of governments. There's all kinds of ways we can pivot. So what I'm telling you here is this gives me, this is, Bill calls this a skeleton, and it is. It's not a script. This is a skeleton. I don't know what you believe. I don't know what you do. I don't know how you do it different. It's up to you to tell me. And if you and I are in agreement, let's go. What would stop us from moving forward? Now, when we get to follow-up, which is, which is coming up in the next couple of sessions, how do we use this in the follow-up? Because your homework assignment is going to be, you're going, for the next 30 days, you're going to refine this EOS. There's two things we're going to be doing from today's session. One, you're going to have a hit list when you come in every day, right? And two, we're going to refine your explanation services, which means you're going to practice it, write it down, and begin giving it. And I would like every person to be able to get up in front of the group and share it next time when they get here. You never know who I'm going to call on. <laughs> don't, 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 don't nobody not show up next time because I said that, okay? <laughs> it's okay. It won't be, it's not a big deal. Now, how do I use this in the follow-up? And we'll close on this one. How do I use it in the follow-up? Because it is instrumental. Which follow-up? It, it is, okay, this is, a, as Dr. Doctor oh. says, small hinge, it turns a big door. Here's how I use it in the follow-up. You and I believe the same things. I told you what it is we do. I showed you how we do it different than everybody else. I've even showed you everybody I've done it for. What in the world is stopping you from taking action? You see how you use it in the follow-up? I'm going to come back to, okay, you and I believe the same things. Remember? I've already showed you. I'm already doing it for all these other agents. What is stopping you from moving forward with me? Right? And she's going to go, I don't know, coach. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find her objection. Okay? It's okay, Kay. Let's talk about it. Is it the money? Right? I'm going to start going through what I think it could be until I find the objection. When I find that objection, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with her. I get it. It is a lot of money. Then I'm going to isolate that objection and put it right over here, and I'm just going to tackle it. So you're telling me, right, if we could get you to this point, help you sell this many houses, you'd take action on this coaching program. Right? Yeah. So when, when I handle objections, I agree, I isolate, and I attack it. Okay? And she's going to say, well, $3.99, $1.99, $5.99, whatever. And I'm going to say, I guarantee I could find money in your budget. 
that you're spending money on that is a total liability to you, that you could have an asset right here, right? And I will not let her off the hook. I'm, going to, I'm a professional and I'm going to push her until I get that objection out of her. You with me? The first objection is usually fluff. Timing's not right. <laughs> Timing's never been right in my life to do something until I created the timing. Let's go to the next one, right? And I just keep pushing her until I get to the core of what the problem is, okay? So I use this in every part of the sales process. Can everybody see that? When two people believe the same things, they're gonna do business with each other. You can book it, okay? So, so over the next 30 days, our assignments are build your EOS, right? And practice it. You guys are doing accountability sessions? Have people get up and share them. Hey, go. And if it's not good, tell them it's not good, right? Don't, you're not doing them any favors by letting them have a bad EOS here. But practice the EOS, and here's what I'd like to see you guys do at every meeting. I, I want everybody to have their hit list. So I want Christy or Karen to be able to say to every person, who's on your hit list today? And I want you to roll it off. I got five people on my hit list today, okay? And that's a little accountability that we all need because we're, mo we're, we're playing offense here versus defense. Fair enough? So let me end with this question. Has this been valuable for you? Yes. Yes. Is there other people that you know, Christy Wilson, that this will be valuable for? Yes. Would you mind making those introductions for me? Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you for a good day. Okay. <laughs>